so this is the setup I've come up with to uh, sort of mark everything out. This is just the width of one of the plates and that should give me enough material to peen over to, to bind it all in. I've then just traced, traced it out and traced the dovetails and then done it on the back here. So, you know, not ideal, not by a long stretch, but it just shows you if you've got a few cheap tools, you know, these are like a quid ago, um, that you can you can bring it in fairly accurate. And then when we cut the cut the infill part, we'll fine tune everything at that stage. Oh, this this is difficult going. It just seems to take forever. So uh, I've cut, as you can see, this one out here and this, the negative space of the dovetail. And uh, they're just rough. I'm just bringing them rough in, the dovetails rough into size at the moment. And then um, it will be a case of fitting, you know, making sure there's a decent fit between the two components. Um, so yeah, as you can see, there's like two, might be able to see. Uh, maybe not, but there's like a fair whack to come off, um, even even after the rough fitting. So uh, what I've been doing is poking holes in with a drill bit, boop, boop, and then um, opening them up. And I don't know, no doubt if you had a bandsaw or something like that, it uh, it'd be a lot easier. But I haven't, so at the minute I'm just. Uh, filing out a space for the, the saw blade, put, putting that in and then um, sawing it off. And then once I get to a point, just knocking it out with the hammer and cold chisel just to break that little, the little bit in the corner or whatever. Um, I don't know what it is about. It's nice to file, but some of the uh, my files just seem to glide over it. <coughs> Not, they don't seem to take a proper cut and they're, they're not ultra fine or ultra, um, rough, you know, like a bastard or a, I don't know, a real fine one, but they, yeah, they're not taking a particularly good cut. Um, but luckily, I've got this aluminium file, a file for aluminium, and that, that does a nice job of just skating over the top and hogging out a bit. Anyway, all that said, um, I'm gonna crack on now and try and try and get it done because it's slow going and people will be wincing now watching me do this but I just want to get in there and create a hole for me to although having said that I might be able to poke the uh, that is sharp poke the saw blade through um, yeah in fact I'm going to come in from the top here to the line than I'd hoped for, but what can you do? Uh, if anyone's into watching Firestorm as well, get yourself over to uh, Twitch and a colleague woohoo, runs a, uh, a channel called Metal Hamster. It's pretty good. It's quite a friendly channel and, uh, you know, relatively safe for teenagers and whatever else due to the language and stuff. But yeah, good channel. Get involved. Right, I'll, uh, I'll bring you back in in a little bit. Uh, I'd imagine the people that have got time to go on Twitch and the people that are dads and or mums and and the people that are, uh, you know, into making stuff in the shop, down the shed, sorry, is like an ultra 
niche Venn diagram going on there. But uh, yeah, if you have got time, pop over. See uh, Mental Hamster. I think there's a Z in the middle. So uh, yeah, I'll, uh, if I can dig it out, I'll include the link in the description. Uh, just pop over. If you've got an Amazon Prime account, you can subscribe and it like just generates a bit of cash flow for him. So um, yeah, he can do more stuff that he likes and spread happiness and joy to other people. You know, if you had a mill, this would be unbelievably easy. Just uh, measure out your DRO distances and then whap straight through with a uh, dovetail cutter or form tool or something and it'd be job done. My God, sparkles. Oh. Um, yeah. That is the long-term aim for the, for the shed is to get some decent tooling down here because... Uh, I'm straight up broke, but when we get there, we'll get there. Oh, that is just deeply unsatisfying. Woohoo! See, it comes off fair. It is, it's nice material to work with. It's Obviously, it's metal, but it it's not like killing yourself with steel just to uh, file out a bit. But... Still gets an edge on it and it is freaking sharp when it catches you. And if you have got any tips on doing this, then obviously chuck it up in the uh, the uh, the comment section because I'm all ears. Not only that, if someone else wants to make it following this or they've had it in the back burner for a little while, then you know, awesome, got a little metal splinter. Then uh, it's gonna help them out. Obviously, it's the uh, the classic 20-80, uh, 80-20 rule, isn't it? Happy to give up 80% of your information, but you always need to retain that 20% just to, just to make yourself look good in a bind, you know. Uh, I know that's the, the sort of corporate policy. Keep your absolute gems for yourself so that when all else has failed, you can just... Whip out your preciousness like nothing else has happened. And just amaze people. Oh. This is slow going. But we'll get there. We will get there. Ah, oh, so we've got it. Got it fitted now. And, uh... My word, that was a lot of filing. And that's only one half done. So uh, I got it pretty close and it was just snagging up on a few. Uh... You can probably see there's a bit of a gap, which is a bit of a shame, but snagging up in a few little areas that wasn't, I couldn't re readily identify where they were. So uh, what I did was just put it in the vise and sort of squeeze it together. Um, which means it's a nice tight fit anyway. <clears throat> I'm not too worried about these gaps. Um, time me peeing everything over because now it's hammering a clock and just gonna upset the metal to fill those place, uh, voids and take a good bind. So yeah, it'll be hammering all down on there and then hammering on the, the brass to, you know, flare it out into the any available space and then that'll, that'll be the joint done. Um, so yeah, now it's just hammering, which uh, you know, ain't no one got time for that. So I'll bring you back in in a bit. Wow, that takes a lot of hammering and it looks really rough now as well, which is a shame because uh, put a lot of work into it and then you've just got to trash it a little bit. So like you knock all these in, uh, you know, peen it over and that any sort of imperfection between the mating surfaces of your um, cheek and sole plate, base plate, whatever it's called, is the metal expands into that. There's no glue or um, Loctite or anything in there. So it does, you know, on the inside there are some gaps, but on the whole we look pretty good. Oh, frig me, that's warm. So also I just, I don't know if it 
if it's a thing, but try to stress relieve the brass a little bit. I've got a uh, little blow torch on there and just let them heat up. Got up to a temperature that I thought was good enough and then, um, yeah, uh, like car carried on hitting them. Well, let them cool off and then carry on just to sort of enable them because obviously there's quite a lot of copper in um, brass. So just to work, uh, obviously copper's work hardening. That's my theory anyway. I don't know if it's a real thing, but yeah. So uh, next thing is I'm just going to get the, I mean, you, you could 100% file these down, but I, I kind of want to get cracking on with this. So I'm just going to get the, um, like the standing flap disc on the grinder and just whip off most of this. Um, yeah, it's good as well because it's upset. It. There's no low, well, we'll wait and see, but it doesn't look like there's any low, low spots. I did crack the metal, the brass there though, which is a bit of a pain. This is still flipping warm though. Uh, yeah, so come in, sand it off. Uh, yeah, grind, sand it off with the disc and then uh, see where we're at. Brass bow. 